but I had to bring some R&B in the house. And y'all see her, and y'all seen some pictures of me. And I needed every bit of Isaac Hayes to help me talk to this woman <laughs> to get her. I had a good rap, but it wasn't good enough to be winning a Sunday school sweet little lady like that. And we spend three hours sometimes on the phone. She'd be ironing and doing everything else, and I'd be talking. And then Isaac would be with us, and I'd put him on. <clears throat> so I finally wore it down. Took a couple years, <laughs> but we made it. Um, I, it's ditto to everything that we heard so far, and I'm telling you, um, I know I wouldn't be nowhere here if it hadn't been for her sweet Proverbs 31 and that first Peter of uh, just let me run until that leash got tight enough. Nine years of marriage and I was out there, but I was on my knees beside the bed and she said, I want to be there when Jesus zap your behind. And he did, and everything else from that came from there. And there's Michael, one of them babies that she had <laughs> right there from back then. But guys, and I mean, it's been a journey through, y'all know I like music because part of my music ministry is here. And so, sorry, but we had to have some music here today, but I'm just so thankful for everybody being here. And I don't have much else to say because I just reaped all the benefits of that. And, and we had the opportunity to bring all of that here to serve Worship Center. And that will always be until y'all have me <laughs> laid out here. But this is home and ministry and the folks and I'm still giving out everything I can. Everything he put in me is to give, and everything that she had sowed into me is for people. I retired early. <clears throat> well, I was young in age, but I was able to retire at 56 and to live longer and to come here across the Delaware River into a new land, <laughs> a new culture. And we adapted to that culture and to bring y'all some Jersey joy. <laughs> and it's been that way. So I, babe, that body's gone, but the spirit fingers on in Medi. Just to clarify, yes, you hear some of the family call me Jerry because that was my nickname. I came here and assumed a new identity. <laughs> but uh, my middle name is Gerard, and she was Jerry, so it's Big Jerry and Little Jerry. So my dad was about 5'3", and I was a junior, so he was already Dave, so it won't be two Daves in the house, so I became Jerry. <laughs> so, and the Bird family is my mother's family that are here. I think it's my last aunt that's here, Aunt Joyce from Harvard Grace is here with us. And Peter Berry, my cousin, is talking about me, the eldest grandson on my mother's side. And cousin Matthew, Aunt Joyce's son, 20 years to the day, to the day, same birthday, 20 years apart, he the baby. <laughs> so thank all of you. God bless you. Hi, everyone. As Matt told you earlier, my name is Colette. And um, before I share this song, um, I can definitely echo some of the words shared this morning by Queen and Danielle and um, some of the couples. Tony and I benefited from Jerry and Dave as well. Um, getting counseling from them before we were married. 
And um, I just, I'm, I feel so blessed because my own mother, my mother suffers from dementia. And um, for a number of years, you know, there are things you want to talk to your mom about. As you go through life, you know, going through school, your friendships, your job, being a wife, being a mother. And um, God has been really good to me because even though I couldn't share those conversations with my mother, he placed other mothers in my life to fill, the, fill that role. And Jerry was definitely one of them. I remember sitting down at our meetings and oh my goodness, it's just immediate connection, immediate. And she always had such wonderful things to share with me and she would look me right in my eye and just say it so sternly. And I, I think to the last time we visited with her and like Tony said, she was just going on and on and on, but I wanted to hear her. I wanted to hear what she had to say. And my God, she has such a bold faith. And I remember her saying about God just using her to the very end, that he was bringing people to her in, these, in those last days. And I'm so glad he brought us. And she said to me, she said, I'm just a vessel. And that is what I captured from our conversation. That's what we are. We are vessels that God is filling so that we can serve. And that's what she did to the very end. She served her God to the very end. And I am so gracious for that. So as I share this song, I looked it up and it's about this couple. Well, it was inspired by a couple. The husband happened to be um, com confined to a wheelchair and that's how he got to work each day. And the wife for 20 years was bedridden. And they were asked one day, so how do you do it? Why are you such happy Christians? And the wife responded, his eye is on the sparrow. So I know he's watching over me. There's so much joy in that. In spite of their circumstances, in spite of her illness, she knew God was watching over her and she had the joy of the Lord as her strength. So as I share this song with you, I want you to imagine Jerry singing this or speaking these words to us. It is a song of joy. It may sound somber, but if you listen to the words, it really is a song of joy. So I, I ask you to pray for me as I share it with you. And 
share a few minutes first. Last evening at the viewing, I saw this, uh, the meeting of Geraldine that was out there. It's, it's on, on, in a frame. And as I read through it, I thought, that's Jerry. That's just like Jerry. And I know, Danielle, you had mentioned some aspects of the meaning of her name, but I thought I would Share this, what it says out there. Geraldine, uh, in Hebrew, means beloved. And the Bible character is David. And this is what it says, the, the Hebrew uh, version. Lasting friendship comes naturally, known for her tenacity, has a playful nature, enjoys practical jokes. Pleasing her family is her primary goal. She believes in dreams for a bright future. She is admired, admired for her honor and integrity. She is self-motivated, enjoys her work, and has a positive outlook on life. The German meaning of Geraldine means mighty with a spear. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Because many times she would 
ask me, how's your family doing? You know, I've been praying for them. And you know that, you knew that was not just words, but that was real because we, I knew that she was praying for us and for our family. And when I thought about the spear, it's like her prayers penetrated that shield of darkness or that, that, that dark part. She had, her prayers had an effect of opening up the glory of the Lord over people's lives. Moore is charitable and caring in everything she does. She has eyes full of magic, which I think she had that glint and that sparkle in her eye. That sparkle could mean that she's going to tell me, about ready to tell me a, a funny story. Or just, I could see that she was excited about her God, what she was speaking about in certain, for certain stories. Her family stands firmly behind her. Geraldine believes in life, liberty, and happiness, and she had admired, she's admired for her superior intellect. She enjoys sharing new ideas with others. She is full of wisdom and foresight. And um, I've had the opportunity to visit her in the hospital at her home, and every time I would visit her, uh, we would just get to laughing. I mean, she would... I just loved her sense of humor. I had so much fun with her. And no matter how much pain she was in, no matter uh, if it was something that you knew that she was not feeling well, she always had that smile on her face. And it was like she was ministering to, her, to me instead of me uh, ministering to her. And um, I remember a few months ago, she was still up and around, and I was, she was sitting on the couch, and, and I thought, well, I'm just going to just be there maybe for a couple of minutes, because I know she tires easily, and so after like 20 minutes, I said, well, I should go, and she's, no, no, stay, stay, and we were like talking and having a great time, and I think it was like about an hour until I left, and she was just, she was just amazing. She really ministered to me, and I'm really going to miss her. She has always been a special lady to me. God bless y'all. Love you. You didn't, didn't have to know Jerry long until you felt like you had a close relationship. This is always encouraging to us. We'll miss her greatly. Every time she came to church, I know where she sat, her and Dave, and uh, I know where everybody sits. <laughs> so I know if they're not here or not. <laughs> we'll miss her greatly. Uh, the last conversation I had with her probably was, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. And um, we had a, one of those end of life conversations, which I've had with many people throughout 38 years of pastoring. And uh, so I said, so um, you're leaving us. She said, yeah, it's time. And, um, and I said, well, we're going to miss you. She said, well, I want to take a couple of you with me. <laughs> I said, I'm not ready yet, Jerry. I'm not ready yet. It was a great conversation. Yeah, amazing. I asked uh, Jer or Dave, I guess I can say Jerry too. <laughs> I asked Dave um, if she had any favorite scriptures. Here's one of them. In Psalm 90, it says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night, you carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep in the morning. They are the grass which grows up in the, mo in the 
Morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it is cut down and withers. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The Lord was her dwelling place. You, could, you just knew that. Her legacy is deep in the hearts of many, all of us sitting right here. She was a lady of truth and mercy. It was amazing. She told it to you straight, even to the pastor, which I invited and enjoyed. She told it to you straight, but it was easy to receive because she loved deep. That made her beautiful inside and outside. Another scripture that um, Dave gave me, it's from Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, and it's from the Amplified Bible. It says, my heart was touched, and I fervently sang to him my desire. Take for us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards of our love, for our vineyards are in blossom. So I was trying to figure out, is that, was that verse for God or for you, Dave? <laughs> for both. <laughs> yeah, right. Little foxes, when, when that's what they would tell the people that they would counsel about marriage, got to watch out for those little foxes. And so I thought that verse really was for you, number one, and also for God. Because she also realized that there's little foxes that can get in and spoil our relationship with God. And um, I think that's the first time I ever use a Song of Solomon verse in a funeral. But it's a great one. We don't understand why Jerry had to endure affliction like she did. And um, we don't understand that. But you know what? I'm not going to dwell on that, and we're not going to dwell on that. We're going to dwell on this. And I think somebody referred to this earlier, but I want to read it from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to read this and listen carefully, because this is what we want to dwell on. We may not understand, we may not, I know we don't understand everything that happens to us in the world. And sometimes we have all those questions. But here's what we need to remember right here. Here's what we know. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, this body, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven, if indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we're always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And that is the truth. <laughs> face to face, Jerry is with Jesus today. 
her Redeemer, her Lord, the one that all of us long to meet. She is there with him face to face today. Think about that. Face to face. I don't know how all that looks, but I know it's true. I know it's true. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Then Jesus said, do you believe this? Do you believe this? It's a good question for us today. Now, you know, I was thinking about, so when Jerry stepped over into heaven <laughs> and met Jesus, you know, we have a son there and I'm thinking, I wonder if she met our son. I wonder how that all works. Because the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about heaven. There's a couple portions of scripture about it. But probably she did. She probably went up to him and said, hey, Christopher, I know your folk down there. They're doing just fine. They'll be here in a little while. <laughs> Revelation 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Then in verse 21, it describes heaven, portions of it. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall be shut at all by shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall be by no means there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Jerry was bold. She was sincere. If she could talk to us today, she would say, do you believe this? Are you ready like I was ready? And I don't know all of you. I know some of you. But that's what she would um, ask us. And she would say, if you're not, do something about it. Behold, she might use this verse. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I, Jesus, talking, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. I believe that would be her message to us today, to every one of us. So if there's any of you today, you're not 100% sure that you're ready to meet the Lord because we don't know when that is individually. If you don't know, I want to lead in a prayer because I believe that's what Jerry would want us to do. So you can bow your heads. Pray this in your heart. 
or you can pray it after me. We can all pray it if you'd like. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. I believe he's the Son of God. I believe he died for me, shed his blood on a cross for the forgiveness of my sin, that I could become a new person. I believe he was raised from the dead so that I can have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in my heart and I confess that you're my Lord and Savior and I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that today and believed it in your heart and you never did before or you're unsure, something powerful happened within you. you became a child of God. So Jerry is with the Lord. We're still here. It's heaven's gain, our loss. And, but you know, when we get there, we're going to look back at this time as a very, very short time compared to eternity. So let's remain faithful to God and to what he's called us to do, every one of us. And Dave... Uh, Two scriptures for you. These scriptures came to me this morning. It's going to be different for you. You only feel that and understand that as the days go by. I cannot identify. But in Psalm 16, verse 11, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And then I felt like, that's Psalm 16, 11. And then I felt like uh, this verse came to my mind in Acts 2 and verse 28. where it says, you have made known to us, to me, the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. So, Father, I pray for Dave today. I pray that as he goes into this new season of his life, that there's a path there that you have laid out for him. And we pray together for him that he would walk in that path every day of his life and experience the presence and the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless him today and his family, his children, his extended family in the name of Jesus. Bless them spiritually. Bless them physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially, in every way, meet their needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take a look at the screen. Like peering through a window bled with rain Emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain we prayed as best we can now we must leave it in his hands yet i know when my eyes fail to see he is able Even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. But if he chooses not to move in the world, 
confident he's working all together for my good i will stand behind his word for he Questions seem to haunt you night and day. How could God allow your heart to be torn this way? Did he listen when you call? Or is he even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see He is able Even though it seems impossible to me He is able But if he chooses not to move in the way we prayed he would, confident he's working all together for my good, I will stand behind his word for he. Let's all stand together as we, uh, for a benediction, I want to read another favorite scripture, portion of scripture that Jerry had, and it's Psalm 91. And it reads like this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked." Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen and amen. Well, it's been a great joy to honor the memory of Geraldine Parker. Playground. I was alone. 
lost in my hometown When you left here They say time makes it better mm-hmm. And I'll see you later, my brother And we'll be together A long time forever When I leave here I'll miss your wit I'll miss your charm Just want to hold you in my arms Hearts and in blue You have no clue how I miss you Oh, yeah, I miss your voice When you would call I miss your smile Most of all Just us two With no Take simple precaution. I think of you all since you left here. Life a bit harder. I love a lot smarter since you left here. Those days I can't take it. Oh, 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 I've learned how to make it. Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus and me. Since you left here Oh my, my I miss your wit I miss your charm Just wanna hold you In my arms Heart sad and blue You have no clue How I miss you I miss your voice When you would call I miss your smile Lord, Jesus was waiting when you left here. 